The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is... G'day team, welcome to the Galactic Federation. The key word is motivation if we're to springboard our society into a sustainable future by 2012. Jump on board, strap yourselves in. Today is a day for Millicom, positive global solution. Let's head down to Earth Sanctuary and visit Danny. There we go. How's that? Beautiful cracker. Look at that. Magnificent. Oh, I love seeing that windmill. Just in motion everywhere we go. How's everyone doing? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Welcome to Federation TV. This is Project Blue Star. It's May 19th, 2008. We've been on this project now for eight years. Uh, just over four years and counting before 2012 and the conclusion of this wonderful, wonderful project. I'm uh, out here looking at the domes. Can you see some of those in the background? I hope you can. I'm heading down to Melbourne tomorrow to catch up with Joey and Tommy to see our, uh, our uh, advancement into uh, looking at the Jura bricks, the panelling for our beautiful dome village. I'm here at the uh, Millicom site at Earth Sanctuary World Nature Centre and those panels look nice and clean. And uh, as per normal, every Monday we have to look at energy, food, water, shelter, utilities and well-being. Don't forget well-being, that's you. Don't forget to take your shoes off. Rub your beautiful little feet on the wonderful skin of the earth, the lovely soil and receive that energy. It's just absolutely magnificent. Monday doesn't need to be a, uh, a huge day in making sure your supplies, uh, your water levels, um, that your energy is running efficiently, whether it's solar, wind, uh, or even look, even if you're still on the grid, the main thing is uh, just heightening your security. That's why we developed Millicom many years ago. It's really an educational platform just to help people become more sustainable. It is obviously integral for the future, and you guys wouldn't be watching this program if you didn't think it was obviously very, very important. Um, on today's program, we're actually going to be looking at um, horticulture. Uh, those who are watching on uh, on Saturday, Benny and I started our little uh, little garden. Uh, we're used to growing veggie patches with soil, but uh, we're going to try and upgrade that to the level to hydroponic veggie patch so we can um, gain greater insight into uh, hopefully growing um, uh, more food with, uh, with less resources. Uh, we're not too sure if we can bring too much soil, I hope you can hear me through the wind there, too much soil into the actual village itself, so uh, if we can create it, a beautiful veggie patch with just using basic uh, essentials such as a uh, minimal amount of water to uh, increase our harvest that would be just magnificent. So hydroponics program that we'll be investigating today. It's been a bit of a cracker uh, last week with um, some um, huge news as far as the climate's concerned around the planet earth. Um, that 7.9 earthquake in China is um, uh, is going to be affecting people for, uh, for a long, long time, as did the 2006 tsunami throughout the Indian Ocean there, is still obviously um, causing grief and um, hardship to a lot of people around the world. And uh, I guess that's what we try and remind people. And, uh, and uh, many years ago, uh, submissions to the government was to remind people of that, of the, uh, of the need for uh, mitigation in the area of climate change. One dollar spent uh, will save you about seven dollars and uh, it's, it's going to be completely necessary uh, if we choose to survive in the future is to look at sanctuaries and uh, development areas where um, our good people can go uh, in the event of um, natural disasters worldwide. Tommy's in Melbourne at the moment. Go on you Tommy. How you going Joey? I'll be uh, seeing the boys tomorrow which will be fantastic and Tommy and I head, up, head uh, down to Melbourne and back up to Darwin, the, uh, the top end of Australia where uh, Tommy and I are graduating. We finally get our diploma in paramedical science, so we get to wear the big hats and piff them all over the place. That'll be very interesting. So that's this week, and uh, we'll continue on with Fed TV uh, in the top end of Australia. Uh, then later in the week, um, I'll be visiting Joey and Tommy again, or sorry, Tom and I visit Dad again in Melbourne to um, continue on our work with our climate change village, uh, which is just an absolute cracker. What a fantastic 
project to be involved in and uh, those out there with any um, uh, ideas or discussions for, uh, for villages uh, which need to be shut off completely from the environment, um, just keep flowing them through. We don't have all the answers but uh, we'll only have a crack. We're not experts, we're just experts at having a go. Uh, climate change warnings on millicom.com guys, um, 5 million uh, now estimated to be homeless due to that huge earthquake in China. It's a lot of tents, it's a lot of tucker, it's a lot of water that needs to be shipped in from somewhere. Just be mindful of what's going on. Uh, there's over 133,000 um, fatalities and missing now due to the uh, cyclone that hit Burma last week. Uh, just over the road at the Philippines, there's now a, a further thousand evacuees due to a tropical storm affecting the area. Uh, more storms uh, causing flooding and landslides in the areas of Vietnam and Malaysia. Um, there's also uh, record-breaking heat being felt in, in the United States of America, California and Nevada in particular. Um, a couple of volcanoes erupting and uh, showing further activity around the world, keeping an eye on Mount Etna, which is obviously uh, Europe's largest volcano. And uh, for five days now she's been spewing lava, so authorities are keeping a close eye on her. And in Chile, two volcanoes are uh, showing activity, one with some extraordinary scenes of lightning bolts mixing with the uh, hot ash clouds, and uh, the other volcano on the Argentinian border, which uh, authorities are stating it's rumbling, is a result of uh, glacial melt. I'm not sure what's worse. Uh, further insights, sorry, uh, on millicom.com. So have a look at those if you need uh, some more information on them, team. And uh, there's another story stating that this period of time that we're living in right at this minute is now known as the greatest extinction episodes known to mankind. What an absolute cracker. Let's go uh, into a, a Millicom Insight, hydroponics. See you tomorrow. PGS, Positive Global Solutions. You are a positive global solution. That's right. See ya. G'day everybody. Welcome to another Insight for Millicom Positive Global Solutions. Today, it's hydroponics. But before we go into it, Let's just show some beautiful imagery of some of our little mates in the garden. Aren't they just gorgeous? Oh, just fantastic. I love these little fellas. With the advent of climate change, it is our duty to investigate methods of growing food in an environment where we may be limited with certain resources such as soil. The name hydroponic comes from the Latin term meaning working water and is essentially the growing of plants without soil. When most people think of hydroponics, they think of plants grown with their roots suspended directly into water with no growing medium. And a medium is simply just what the roots are growing in. This is just one type of hydroponic gardening, but there are literally hundreds of different methods and there are pros and cons for each. In hydroponics, the plant only receives what you give them. You have complete control over the pH, the nutrients and nutrient strength. With soil, it can sometimes be a guessing game due to nutrient quality. Now as global warming continues, it essentially means we are moving into a future of an unstable environment. So we need to look at a variety of methods that we can continue growing our food. Hydroponic gardening can be very complicated with computers and sensors controlling everything from watering cycles to nutrient strength and the amount of light that the plant receives. But on the other hand, hydroponics can also be incredibly simple. A hand watered bucket of sand with a single plant is also a method of hydroponic gardening. Most hobby oriented hydroponics systems are somewhere between the two extremes. The average home hydroponic system usually consists of a few basic parts, a growing tray, a reservoir, a simple timer controlled submersible pump to water the plants, and an air pump and an air stone to oxygenate the nutrient solution. Whatever the scenario, hydroponics is definitely a way for the future. Let's give it a crack team, why not?